if I participating as, as a, a specialist, as a developer in this, well, how does that work really? How, how can I come in and propose just something or do I pick from a list and, and how do I have to think about it for the, for the people who have never participated in something like this? And I think the more interesting question is, how do I know that I'm really doing something worthwhile? And, um, and I think the recipe for that is um, problem first. Make sure that before you do anything, you are able to coherently define the problem that you're solving in your head. And then think about how much of that is a problem that is specific to my environment, to my day-to-day -day needs. You know, I've configured my, my desktop in a certain way and I do my things a certain way. And I, it would be great for me if I could plug in this additional component here. That's a mistake that, that, that many people do. And the reason it's a mistake is because then you end up creating a solution for yourself. Um, and hopefully that's not what, what you set out to do. Um, what you really want to do is, okay, I think that in general, like think, think in more general terms, the problem is, uh, for example, you want to solve, let's, 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 um, uh, let's take something rather trivial. Um, there's a privacy aspect of, um, you know, participating in conferences with video. And uh, what I've heard from many educators is that one of the uh, big issues that they're fighting with right now is um, no one turns on their video in a conference. No one turns on their, Microsoft, their microphone. And they end up, um, teachers end up feeling like they're, you know, teaching to the wall. And it's a really, I can imagine how demotivating that is. I know that from my days as, as, as a lecturer, uh, getting the feedback from people has been the most precious part. It's what motivates me and I believe most educators to just seeing that, that, that excitement of getting it at a certain point. And not having that is, I think, dramatic. So you would think, okay, um, that's the problem I want to solve. I want to improve the, the level of bidirectional communication between educator and, um, and students. And then you would think, okay, well, um, why is that a problem? Because many people turn off their camera. Okay, why do, why do you do that? Um, and, you know, part of the people do that, well, because there's a mess behind me. You know, I could tell you, well, clean up your room, but that's not going to uh, necessarily be an advice that everyone follows, although I hope they do. Um, then the second best thing, okay, how about we hide your room, right? And, and you don't have to, uh, to worry about it. Uh, and this is how you come up with something like Blur. Now, obviously, obviously, that's a, it's, it's a very... It's very an easy example. We weren't the first to think of Blur, although we ended up doing it. But it was important that we knew that this was why we were doing it, you know, because that also helps you limit your scope. As you're, as you're coding a feature, you will often be tempted to, oh, what if I added this little gimmick here and that little gimmick there? And then you, you should be able to ask, you, should I do that? How does that help the problem that I've set out to solve? So as you are applying and as you are working on the features that you'll be participating with, make sure that you always keep the problem in mind. And every little thing that you do, think about how it reflects on the problem that you're solving, the user problem, not a, techno a technological problem. How do you make life better for that user that you've set out to solve a problem for? So, Emil, you can say that I've actually not cleaned up my room, and that's why I have Blur enabled. So, yeah, you're I, totally I, right. I, I, was, I, was, I was about to say that, but then I thought... <laughs> that, that's fine. And let me just add something to, to Thomas' point. So, Emil said, this is what you need to do, you know, to focus the problem you're trying to, to, to solve. And then, and I think it's particularly important in the context of a hackathon, there is the way you do things. Because people think that in, in, in coding, well, just a matter of coding stuff up. And then, of course, if you're doing, of course, with code, if you're doing open source, you just send your patch and it will be accepted by the people and everybody, everybody's happy. Well, it's actually a bit more complicated than that. Because behind every free software project, uh, behind most free software projects, at least, there is a community of people working together. And getting your fix or your improvement accepted means doing things in the way that specific community of people does it. So uh, I teach a class in, in free software in which rather than teaching, you know, the technical parts, because in the most cases they have already seen that those parts in other classes, I teach students, you know, how to get your code accepted. And it's all about getting to know the habits of the community you want to contribute to and adhere to those habits, which often are not the way you would do things yourself. But that's part of being, you know, working together with a group.
And so the thing that I encourage people participating in this hackathon, but really in any other free software project out there is try, in addition to learning how to do the change you want to make to the code, to learn how people work, how they do things, and try to adapt your way of working so that you make the life easier for other people to you know, receive your contribution and everyone works uh, happy together with you know, a lot less friction. And this is something which works very, very well when you have a synchronized time to work together in a hackathon than if you are asynchronous because you have a lot of round trips in which you have sent your code and no, please do it the other way and can be much faster if you do that during a synchronized event like a hackathon. And that also brings us um, uh, to... Uh, you know, seeing it from a, a perspective that uh, open source software uh, development also uh, also teaches a lot more things uh, than just software development per se. It's just not the coding, right? It's about learn how to receive feedback, how to generalize things, etc. By the way, on that uh, particular use case, I already heard, and I mean, we are in video conferences all day. Um, these days during the pandemic. I also, you know, heard excuses why not uh, turning on the video that uh, people didn't have uh, their makeup on. So maybe that, that, that may be a feature request for you to resolve uh, in Jitsi um, to, to, to fix the missing makeup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, go and try it. And if you end up finding people who like it, then... Um, then, then more power to you. I would, I would say, you know, um, uh, it is one of the values of our culture that we shouldn't judge things by their appearance. So I'm, 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 I'm kind of, um, I, I find that a little bit conflictual with, with, with this specific goal. Let's make, let's prettify you. Uh, how about we focus on the things that 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 you're saying, and and what really uh, we we need you to turn your video for is so that we can increase the bandwidth of communication, so that we can see whether you're unhappy or happy or whether you're listening or whether I need to go back in my explanations. But sure, you know, I can say all these things and then people are still going to be embarrassed um, uh, by not looking the best that they could be looking. I, I, that, that, that's just always going to be a fact of life. So, you know, um, go, and, go and implement it, folks, and, and let's see what we come up with.